Good evening. Welcome to evening prayer with St. James Episcopal Church. We are live in Skinny Atlas, New York, again from uh, the living room of the rectory because I happily tested positive with COVID over the weekend and uh, we thought we would be in the church, but we're here now. There is a bulletin on St. James website at stjamesscan.org and I will be giving you pages from the prayer book if you have a prayer book at home that you would like to use instead. And we will begin on page 115 of the Book of Common Prayer. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me because he, as my, he at, is at my right hand. I shall not fall. And turning the page over to 116, I'm going to use a different introduction or invitation than the one you'll find there, but we'll get to the, the uh, text of the confession in just a moment. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. And if you would join me in saying the words of the confession that are found on page 116. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. And now turning to page 116, if you would say the, the responses of the invitatory with me. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. And now just to make things interesting, we're going to turn for a moment to page 82 in the Book of Common Prayer and say the Jubilate, which is Psalm 100. If you have it in front of you, please say it with me. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. And now I am going to be joined by Sister Marie Patricia Hughes, who is going to read the scripture readings for the evening. Our psalm tonight is Psalm 59, a part of Psalm 59, and it'll be found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 665, 665. Rescue me from my enemies, O God. Protect me from those who rise up against me. Rescue me from evildoers and save me from those who thirst for my blood. See how they lie in wait for my life. 
how the mighty gather together against me, not for any offense or fault of mine, O Lord, not because of any guilt of mine, they run and prepare themselves for battle. For my part, I will sing of your strength. I will celebrate your love in the morning, for you have become my stronghold, a refuge in the day of trouble. To you, O my strength, will I sing, for you, O God, are my stronghold and my merciful God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first lesson tonight is from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 15, and it's the New Living Translation. Then I said, what sorrow is mine, my mother? Oh, that I had died at birth. I am hated everywhere I go. I am neither a lender who threatens to foreclose nor a borrower who refuses to pay, yet they all curse me. Then I said, Lord, you know what's happening to me. Please step in and help me. Punish my persecutors. Please give me time. Don't let me die young. It's for your sake that I am suffering. When I discovered your words, I devoured them. They are my joy and my heart's delight, for I bear your name, O Lord of heaven, of heaven's armies. I never joined the people in their merry feast. I sat alone because your hand was on me. I was filled with indignation at their sins. Why does my suffering continue then? Why is my wound so incurable? Your help seems as uncertain as a seasonal brook, like a spring that has gone dry. This is how the Lord responds. If you return to me, I will restore you so you can continue to serve me. If you speak good words rather than the worthless ones, you will be my spokesman. You must influence them. Do not let them influence you. They will fight against you like an attacking army, but I will make you as secure as a fortified wall of bronze. They will not conquer you, for I am with you to protect you and rescue you. I, the Lord, have spoken. Yes, I will certainly keep you safe from these wicked men. I will rescue you from their cruel hands. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now turning to page 119, if you're using the Book of Common Prayer, we will say together the words of the Magnificat, which is the Song of Mary. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Our second lesson tonight is from the book of Matthew, chapter 13, and is a common English Bible translation. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that somebody hid in a field, which someone else found and covered up. Full of joy, the finder sold everything and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of the of fine pearls. When he found one very precious pearl, 
He went and sold all that he owned and bought it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you now to say with me the words of the Nunc Dimittis, which is on page 120 in the Book of Common Prayer. It is the song of Simeon. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, <coughs> whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Scripture um, amazes me. Texts written hundreds of years ago, some of them texts that I have read before, some of them many, many times. And yet, Scripture is living, which means that every time we pick it up, it has the capacity to say something completely new, something that we have never heard in these particular texts, no matter how many times we might have read them before. Now, the text tonight are very hard. The first two, in particular, the psalm and the one from Jeremiah, are full of evil and injustice and in persecution. And so it's a reasonable thing to wonder what, what promise do they have? What do they have to say to us? One way to approach texts is historically to um, read about the context in which they were written and, the, and whatever we might know about the author to try to understand what it was that was happening that, at the time that, that brought these words forth from the pen and the heart and the mind of the author. Another way to approach texts like these is metaphorically and to think about enemies not as people but as difficult circumstances that overwhelm us. And I've done both, and I think both um, have something to say to us, and, and both can be useful, and both can um, speak to our hearts and our minds. But this time, when I listened to these texts, I heard something different, something I had never heard before, something completely new. In the last couple of years, I have had the privilege, and um, you may have too, of speaking with our African American sisters and brothers about their lives, about their experience of living in America. We have heard the preaching of some of these folks and the witness of some of them in our Racial Justice and Reconciliation series. Some of us have taken a course called Sacred Ground that tells the story of indigenous Americans, of Spanish Americans, of Asian Americans, of African Americans. And when when I read these scriptures, I heard their voices speaking. I heard them crying out to God with Psalm 59, saying, rescue me from my enemies, rescue me from evildoers and those who thirst for my blood, not because of any guilt of mine. And with the prophet Jeremiah, I heard their voices saying, sorrow is mine. I am hated everywhere I go. The stories of these brothers and sisters are not mine to tell, and I'm not going to try, I'm not going to repeat them. Their stories are mine to hear. They are for people with skin like mine, which may be, may be less feverish, 
It's ours to listen to what it's like to live in sorrow and hardship and hurt, not because of anything that you have done, but because of something over which you had no control, the circumstances of your birth. These scripture passages remind me that today people are crying out to God and to their fellow humans to listen, to care, to act. We have had some amazing guests this year at St. James, uh, Terrence King and Alicia Dixon Garrard in particular. And one of the questions that people have consistently asked them is, why do you come here? Why do you talk to people like us? Why do you take the risk? Where do you get the courage from? How do you keep on going? How do you stand up and tell your story to the very people who have been a part of the history and continue to be a part of the history of your oppression? And to a person, they talk about their faith. They talk about their trust in God and their hope. They have what Jesus talked about in the passage from Matthew. They have found the pearl of great price, the source of comfort, the one who promises to protect and rescue them and even to conquer the evil they have known. One of the things I've heard this year that we have heard this year, the stories of suffering an injustice that I certainly have never known. Yes, I have known suffering. Yes, I have known injustice, but not that particular kind, and not as consistently as our sisters and brothers of color. St. James Racial Justice and Reconciliation has invited us all to make a journey to be open and curious about racial reconciliation and social justice. Our sisters and brothers of color have been on that journey since the moment they were born. It wasn't their choice. We have a choice. We have an opportunity to journey with them. And it's not one that really has an end in sight. That shouldn't be our goal. But the invitation to all of us, the encouragement to all of us, to me, is to take that journey, to be willing to take that journey, to be willing to listen, to be curious, to seek out the people who, whose voices these are, and to invite their stories because it is through that kind of love and invitation, that kind of willingness to listen and to care that God's mercy and justice flows. It's through you and me. I invite you now to um, join me in saying the words of the Apostles' Creed, which um, can be found in the Book of Common Prayer on 120. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The prayers will be found in the Book of Common Prayer tonight on page 121. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Intercessory Prayers A. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. At this time, we invite those on Facebook to post your prayer request. Lord, I want to pray for hearts, our hearts and our minds to be open and curious. I, I pray for the Racial Justice and Reconciliation Commission. I pray for the partnerships that we're beginning to build, the relationships that have begun, and for a way forward in this, um, in this work. I also pray for um, the staff of St. James, for those who are um, sick with COVID, myself and Nora Pesesnik. Pray for all the families represented by the staff. We pray for Jamie and Nicole. We give thanks that Laura's father is recovering. We pray for all those, Lord, who are suffering in any way, for families who are preparing or have um, prepared the process of, of burying their loved ones. We give thanks for uh, Dolores' doctor and pray for her family, especially our brother Laverne, buried her today. Prayer of the day, O oh, gracious God, we remember before you today your servant and apostle James, first among the twelve to suffer martyrdom for the name of Jesus Christ. We pray that you will pour out upon the leaders of your church that spirit of self-denying service by which alone they may have the authority among your people, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I'd like to say a special prayer for those people who are suffering from any kind of war, any kind of persecution. And also for those people who, uh, according to our Bishop, Bishop Curry, need to be recognized at the Lambeth Conference that is coming up with all of the bishops in the, the Episcopal bishops in the world, that um, they do what is right for to end discrimination among the, those who are so discriminated against right now. I also would like to pray for our priest Becky, that she gets better and that she is able to continue to getting well and that God will be with her and take care of her and guide her as she struggles through this time of trial and sickness. Prayer for the presence of Christ. Lord Jesus, stay with us. For evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our companion in the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope that we may know you as you are, revealed in scripture in the breaking of bread. Grant this for the sake of your love. Amen. A prayer for the nation. Grant, O God, that your holy and life-giving spirit they so move every human heart, and especially the hearts of the people of this land, the barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatred cease, that our, our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace. 
You, O God, have bound us together in a common life. Help us in the midst of our struggles for justice and truth to confront one another without hatred or bitterness and to work together with mutual forbearance and respect. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. And lastly, a prayer for mission. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep tonight. Give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick. Lord Christ, give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted. Shield the joyous and all for your love's sake. Amen. A special thank you to Sister Marie Patricia Hughes for reading and saying the prayers. You know, it's interesting. I, I would guess this might have been true for you too, Marie, but even the prayers sounded different tonight. Um, I, if you are wondering how you might take action um, on behalf of um, being open and curious about racial justice and um, reconciliation. We have an entire page on the website that the, is about what the Racial Justice and Reconciliation Commission is doing. There is information, uh, there's a, an article in every single uh, weekly that Emma Cowley has been writing that's called Did You Know? There is information, there's always information in the um, seasonal spirits that come out. There most likely will be a monthly discussion series that sometimes is a book or sometimes is a speaker or sometimes is a, a video. Um, the, there will be another opportunity to take the 10 week course, the 10 session course that goes over 20 weeks uh, that's called Sacred Ground and the Racial Justice and Reconciliation Commission um, has scheduled a mini retreat at the end of August when we're going to do our planning for the fall and so there'll be a lot more detailed information coming out then but it is our intention to continue to to continue to walk this road and to invite people to um, dip in a toe or jump in over your head you may be already swimming around um, but there'll be more that that is um, coming down the pike uh, in the fall. This coming Sunday, I um, will not be present in church because I will not have finished um, with the protocol that's recommended by CDC and the state and the county. Um, I really, my biggest goal is to protect the people that are around me. Um, from sickness and so I just I'm not finished with my 10 days and so um, Kathy Major the Reverend Kathy Major who is a friend of St. James we have had her preaching before and um, celebrating is going to be at all three services on Sunday she will preach and celebrate we will share Eucharist and again live stream as we always do the 9 and the 1045 and outdoors God willing in the park uh, that's probably what there is to say for now. Um, and I invite you, if you have a prayer book, to turn to page 125 uh, to say with me the words of the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation preservation and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise not only with our lips but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Good night, everyone. It was uh, lovely to be with you, and God willing, we will be back in the church next week. <laughs>